Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, we are going to look at how we can set validation errors to our formic form when the errors are coming from the server side from Laravel. So let's take the example of our login form. Now this password is obviously wrong. I have some random string over here. When I click on login, you can see I'm getting some error in my console. The network tab also, if I make it a little large, it gave me a 422 error, which is a validation error. And I can see that inside the errors, there is email and it says the provided credentials are incorrect. And why is this happening? This is happening because inside of a login controller, if we go into our API.php login controller handle login, we are trying to match the hash. If it is not a correct hash match, then we throw a validation exception, correct? Now, ideally, I would like to take this message. In our case, it will be something like the provided credentials are not correct, right? So we should be able to get this message and we should be able to show it somewhere here. So now, obviously, the latest build doesn't have this code, but the new code, which I'm going to show you and I'm going to walk you through, will have that code. So we will have a better UI to deal with. So let me close this application, get checkout on my master branch. Oh, it's not master, it's main. And now, if I run my application again, okay, say so successfully compiled we'll refresh the application and now if i try to again log in obviously with the wrong password you can see it does give user a feedback that the provided credentials are incorrect and that's what we want right so how have we done this let's go to a code obviously because we are working with the login page let's go step by step inside pages we have login inside that we have index.tsx now obviously here we have not done anything then maybe it's the login form let's go inside it so inside the login form we are making an http call from the auth service right so the auth service handle login is called internally it is making an axios call with the email and password now what i have done over here is Let's go into that method. I added this try catch. So why is that try catch required? So basically what we are doing is we are making this Axios call. If we have a success, then we do all these you know, set cookie business and redirect the user to the dashboard. But if we fail, if we don't get a success while we make this post call, then there can be multiple reasons for failure. But the ones which we are interested right now is that if we have a response and the response status code is 422, which means it's a validation error, then we definitely want to do something about it. So we are returning the e dot response, the error dot response. If it is not a 422, then it basically means that we don't know what happened. So basically at that point, I'm only consoling cannot login and then I'm printing the error. And I written false. The written false is primarily so that when I go into my login form, whatever is coming from the response, I'm getting over here, right? So if my response is not, I mean, if I have a response, first of all, which will be the case because you know, I am over here when we have a success, we just do a route.push, right? So that's fine. But if it's a failure, then in here we are returning the error.response. So over here, again, we catch that. Although I don't need to because right now we are handling only 422 in the auth service. But let's just say if we handle 500 as well, in that case, we may have to do something else. So for now, again, one check, which is 422. If we have a validation error, I have this helper function where I am passing all the errors coming from the response 
and then I have this formic helpers dot set field error. This set field error is the function which allows us to set a validation error to a particular field. Okay. Now this is a helper function which I have created. What does it do? If you remember in here we are sending this set field error. This set field error okay has one simple way to add the error message which is it needs the key and it needs the message okay that's how it works let me show you formic set field error Mm. set field error right where is it so if you see it needs the field and it needs the error message so what are we doing i created this helper function so that i can you know loop through things because if there are multiple error objects in a form i will be able to quickly set them so i'm sending all the errors I'm sending the function which is the set field error and then inside the helper I first get all the keys from that object. Why? Because when we have an validation error let's look at the object which we get inside network. Okay. Open it up. Inside error we have email and then we have multiple you know keys for that email right but obviously the key thing here is that the field is email which is the key of the array hence we got the keys over here then we loop through them using the map function okay and as per the api we say that the set set the error where the key is the item and the message is the the error object which we have right which the error object dot the array so one or two something like that now we are joining all of them with slash r slash n so that if we have multiple errors they come one below the other okay right so that's about it with that when i execute this command what happens as you saw we get this kind of a thing. Okay. Now, as I told you, let's just say I have my API server not running. So what is going to happen? I'll just refresh this page. Okay. In this case, we get cannot log in network error. Why? Let's go to a um where is the service let me go to the service right in here we went to the catch block now because the status code because we don't have e dot response and the status code is not 422 this line didn't execute so what happened we consoled an error saying cannot login and the message was network error which is here and then we returned false so our component didn't do anything about it. The moment, let's say our server is running, okay, our password is wrong. What happens? It makes the API call. The API call is, you know, coming in the try catch block. I realize, okay, response is here. Status code is 422. We send it back. The login form now, based on the 422, sets the errors. And that's how we get this feedback. So yes, this is how we were able to set the validation errors coming from Laravel validation to the formic form. This is going to be very frequently required in our application because whenever there are forms, there will be certain validations which are done on the front end, but there are certain validations which will occur at the back end. For example, during the registration, right? The email whether it is unique or not 
is obviously something which we don't know when we are doing client side validation so that's when these kind of error messages being set on the form is very important okay so i'll going to change the rest of the forms with this thing and i'll commit it so that you can see it on the github code repository but for the login i did explain you so do let me know what do you think about this set field error function and how we work with formic to show those validation errors if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel